Hello everyone, I am Ding Da Yang. My American name is Jason. I'm from the Bullet School in Potomac, Maryland. I'm very excited to be here to do the presentation on behalf of my team from the School of Computer Science and Technology, Beijing Institute of Technology in Beijing, China. Their names are Qingyao Liu, Zhong Zheng Zhang, and Jian Wu Li. I will be presenting the topic we worked on, which is detecting overlapping communities via expanding core regions. So now I'm gonna share my screen. So, using a complex network to express data and the relationships between them is a simple but effective way. And analyzing a complex network can help us thoroughly understand the network system. For example, scientists and their co-writing relationships can form a collaboration network in a complex network. The number of the connections inside the communities is as far larger than that between communities. Thus, community structure reveal functional organizations in complex networks, such as social circles in a social network. Detecting these communities has wide applications. For example, in recommender systems, detecting community can improve the accuracy of recommendations. In tagging systems, the problem of ambiguity, which means a tag has different meanings in different contexts, often arises, and the community detection can figure out the context of an ambiguous tag. Consider for a moment the case of social networks, networks of friendships or other acquaintances between individuals. It is a matter of common experience that such networks seem to have communities in them, subsets of vertices within each vertex. Vertex connections are dense, but between which connections are less dense. Most of the actual networks are made of highly overlapping cohesive groups of nodes. Overlapping community structure as an extension of original community structure allows a vertex to appear in several different communities. And it often appears in complex networks, especially in social and information networks. For example, in a social network, a social circle can be viewed as a community and one person may belong to several different communities according to the different social relationships. Many methods of detecting overlapping communities have been proposed, such as click percolation, link clustering, label propagation, and local expansion and optimization. Okay, so the methods of utilizing local expansion and optimization are naturally parallelizable because their computation is usually only related to the information of a very small region of the vertices rather than the whole network. Thus, in the era of big data, they have an advantage over other methods. The methods based on local expansion and optimization usually include two key steps, seeding step and expanding step. Local fitness maximization, which is known as LFM, is the typical one. It iteratively execute two steps until all vertices are marked. In seeding step, which is the first one, LFM randomly selects an unmarked vertex as a seed. In expanding step, LFM expands the seeds until the fitness of this local community is maximized and then marks the vertices in the community. And there are several seeding strategies. Seeding is a very important step for the methods based on local expansion and optimization. The simplest seeding method, which we just talked about, is used by LFM. Randomly selects an unmarked vertex as a seed. 
greedy click expansion uses maximal clicks as seeds, but it is costly to find maximal clicks in the network. Furthermore, the methods of EagleNet analysis is used to find seeds. For the networks with large global clustering coefficients and heavy-tailed degree distribution, there exists some eagle nets with good conductance scores, which are used as seeds, inspired by two different strategies were proposed. One is clustering the vertices by using multi-level weighted kernel k-means algorithm, using a distance criterion to detect. Centroid vertex for every cluster, and then adopting eagle nets corresponding to centroid vertices as seeds. The other is selecting a vertex as a new seed, which has the highest degree and does not connect with any existing seeds directly. Then repeating this procedure until k seeds are selected. Okay. So in this page, I'm gonna talk about the fitness function and its problems. The fitness function of the LFM method depicts how dense a group of vertices are, and the community is a subgraph G identified by the maximization of fitness of its vertices. The fitness of the subgraph G is defined as follows, where k in G is the total inner degree of G, which is twice the number of edges that fall in G. K out G is the total external degree of G, which is the same as the number of edges connecting vertices inside and outside the G. And alpha is a positive real-valued parameter controlling the size of the communities. Accordingly, the fitness of the vertex A with respect to the subgraph G is calculated as the fitness subgraph G plus A minus. The fitness of the subgraph G minus A, as described in two. Okay, so in the second part, the fitness function can be used to expand seeds by adding a neighbor vertex with the maximum positive fitness into the community. This expanding manner is a simple but efficient way because its calculation can be optimized by using the set operations. However, we consider that it ignores mutual connections between neighbors of community when the community is expanded, makes the detected community not certain to be the one that the seed should belong to. So, for example, in Figure Two, the red edges are not taken into consideration when the current seed is expanded. In other words, when the fitness of vertex V respect to the community C is calculated. The connection between V and the vertices that should belong to C but now are outside C will not be considered. Thus, thus, two problems may be caused. Okay, so in Figure Two A, a graph with two communities, which is yellow and blue, the seed vertex is the boundary of the vertex of the blue community. In Graph B, a graph with two communities, yellow and blue. The seed vertex is a core vertex of the blue community. One is that above the expansion strategy may detect another community that current seed does not belong to. If the seed lies in the boundary of the community in Figure Two A, the vertex A will be added into a community by expansion strategy because the fitness of A is the highest among the A, B, C, and D. Which is each of them has one connection with the seed, but the degree of A is the lowest. The fitness function ignores the connection, red edges in Figure Two A, between vertices B, C, and D. Thus, the yellow community is detected and the seed vertex is removed, while the blue one should have been found. The other problem is that even if the expanding seed is the core of the community, the false community may be still found when the seed is small. In Figure Two B, the seed is a single core vertex, and in each of A, B, and F, has the maximum fitness value among the neighborhoods of the seed. Thus, 
the yellow community may be detected and the seed will be removed if A is randomly chosen. However, we should have detected the blue community. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the structural similarity. Structural similarity of two vertices are defined in 22, and we consider it can be used to reflect how strong a connection of two vertices are. Vertex structure of vertex V is the union of V and its neighborhoods, defined as the function above. And in number one, structural similarity of vertex V and the vertex we can exactly reflect how similar they are. With higher similarity, the connection of them is stronger. Similarity of V and W is a value between 0 and 1 and defined as follows. Okay, so our method is also based on local expansion and maximization. Notice that the community is always formed around one or several core vertices. We call those core vertices as the core region of the community, as illustrated in the figure 1a. More specifically, we define the core score of a vertex based on its average structural similarity and its degree, depict its ability to attract other vertices. Utilizing the core scores, we rank the vertices to build a seed's priority list. Then, a greedy method is designed to find core regions as our seeds. Our expanding strategy is based on maximizing the fitness function that is defined in 11. It is worth noting that our method also has the ability to detect some hubs of a network. A hub is a vertex that plays the role of bridging different communities, but it does not belong to any one of them as illustrated in figure 1b. Okay, so our method is based on local expansion and optimization. It consists four steps. Building seeds priority list, seeding step, expanding step, and assigning hubs. Okay, for the section 3a, building seeds priority list, the sigma uv function has been mentioned in slide 8. And for this slide, it's section 3b, the seeding step. In this one, it's a section 3c, which is the expanding step. Last but not least is section 3D, the assigning step. And here is the summary of the whole process. Okay, so the fourth part is the experiments. For the convenience of expression, the purpose method is named as expansion from core region, which is ECR. We thoroughly tested ECR both on artificial network with built-in communities and real-world network with identified communities. The GM benchmark consists of 108 vertices divided into four groups with 32 vertices in each group and each vertex has an expected degree, 16. However, the GM benchmark is too simple to reveal algorithms' limits. Thus, the power law distributions of degrees and community size were introduced into a new class of benchmark graphs called LFR benchmark. We used LFR to test ECR and compared it with some state-of-art algorithms in overlapping community detection, including LFM1, GCE, K-click percolation method, CPM, 
and Copra. We adopted the normalized mutual information to evaluate every method. The NMI value is between zero and one, and the higher the value is, the more accurate the results of community detection are. It will be one if the found communities are exactly the same as the network's ground truth communities, and zero when they are totally different. The aim of this section is to discuss the problem of comparing covers. There are many criteria in the literature. See in forty-seven, but to the best of our knowledge, the case of overlapping clusters has not been considered yet. Here we briefly discuss the issue within the framework of information theory. So here is the function: the normalized mutual information I norm. Of x and y is defined as i norm x y equals to h of x plus h of y minus h of x and y over the h of x plus h of y over two, where h of x and h of y is entropy of the random variable x y associated with the partition of c prime and c double prime, where is The h of x and y is the joint entropy. This variable is in the range of zero to one and equals to one only when the two partitions c prime and c double prime are exactly coincident. Okay, so in this slide is section four, experiment A. Benchmarks on artificial graphs with disjoint communities, and in this slide, which is section four, experiment B, it's the benchmark on artificial graphs with overlapping communities. And in this part, experiment C in section four, it is the benchmarks on real-world networks with ground truth communities. And the last one is section four, experiment D, which is benchmark on real-world networks without ground truth communities. Okay, that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much.